Hello all. So in the next few videos, we will be discussing another interesting topic called the network on chip design on FPGAs. So you might have heard the term NOC or network on chip. Uh, it's basically a network based communication subsystem on an integrated circuit. NOX, they mostly contain switches and links uh, which will interconnect different IPs or processing elements in general and they manage the data movement between them. NOCs, they improve the scalability of system on chip and the power efficiency of complex SOCs. That's why we are interested in them. So first I'll try to introduce some of the terminologies that we will frequently hear when we go for NOC design. So whenever we hear PE or processing element, what we mean is these hardware modules which will be actually doing data processing. So these modules, they can be uh, specialized intellectual properties, IP blocks, or they can be full-fledged processes. And these IPs, they can be homogeneous. That means for all these PEs, they are same module, or they can be heterogeneous. I mean, some of them are processes, some of them are DSP, some of them are the kind of IPs, etc. So all these are possible. Now switches, they are used for routing data coming from one PE to another PE. So this is similar to our crossbar switch uh, when we discuss the FPGA fabric. Okay? So they basically it takes data from one or two ingress ports, input ports, and send it to other egress ports or output ports, or they may send it to the PE. So basically they help in routing. Links, they are nothing but wires which are connecting these switches together. So they might be following some special protocol when they are transmitting data between these switches. Okay. So again, in our case, it could be access stream protocol, can be any other protocol also. Now, another interesting term is uh, topology. So topology is the arrangement of the elements of the network. Okay, so basically how these switches and PEs are arranged, that is what is meant by topology. So there are n number of topologies. You name any shape, they are available. There are two dimensional topologies, there are three dimensional topologies. Everything is uh, available. Even a lot of research is still happening. So some of the very common ones are mesh. Maybe that's the most popular. So in the mesh topology, you can see every switch is connected to a PE and every switch except the one on the edges they are connected to for other switches so that's what is a mesh topology now torus it's similar to mesh but you can see there is a, a loop back from the last switch in a particular row to the first switch in the row same way from the last column to the first column now torus they can be bi-directional or unidirectional this is a bi-directional torus, that means data can move in both directions. That is what these arrows are showing. Now this is a binary tree topology, so you can see uh, it looks like a binary tree. So binary tree is also an example for indirect topology because here you can see every switch is associated with a PE, but here that is not the case, only the leaves, leaf switches, they are connected with the PE, the intermediate ones they are connected only with other switches. Okay, so this is your root node or the root switch, then two switch, then four switch, so on and so forth. This is also a binary tree, but this is called a fat tree because you can see the link width it keeps on increasing as you go higher in the hierarchy. Okay, because uh, if you go higher in the hierarchy, the total traffic is increasing. So if you keep the same link width, as you go higher and higher, the effective throughput will come down. So one way to avoid it is to increase the link width as you go higher in the tree hierarchy. So that's what is called as a fat tree. So only four cases I have shown here, but we have uh, ring topology, we have star topology, we have hypergraph, all kind of different topologies are possible. Now topologies are chosen based on the cost and performance. So cost in terms of flow control, routing, and bisection bandwidth. Okay, so that's another important term, uh, the bisection bandwidth. So one of the most important parameters in deciding the throughput of a NOC is called a bisection bandwidth. 
so basically to find the bisection bandwidth you should divide the knock into two identical sections okay by part right and while doing so the number of links cut by this partition line will give you the bisection bandwidth so in case of a mesh topology uh, you can see if there are total n elements so this is a 4 by 4 when you do a bipartition it is crossing four links so effectively root of 16 that's why it is written like root n times the bandwidth of individual link that is what is the bisection bandwidth in case of a ring you will always cross two links so it is two times bandwidth of a link and here in case of tray you are only cutting one of the links so it is only one link bandwidth is the bisection bandwidth again this is giving a crude idea about the performance okay because practically you know the link bandwidth that is also depending upon the clock frequency at which you are running uh, what is the data width of the link what is the special protocol that you are using all these matters actually in finding the actual bandwidth but this will give a, a overall idea about what is the possible bandwidth of a particular topology so this doesn't mean the mesh topology is the best and we should always go for the mesh topology and that depends upon the other parameters that we discussed that is the overall chip area how much it is taking how complex will be your switches because here the switch architecture will be much complex compared to a single ring architecture so you can see it so we consider other parameters also now almost all the NOC they follow packet based communication that means you are sending data as data packets and every packet it will have a header portion uh, which will have the information about the destination PE so when we are sending packet from one PE to another PE the packet will definitely will have the information about the destination it may have other information also in the header depends such as uh, what is the address of the source PE what is the total size of the packet etc how many bytes in the packet etc now another term that we'll hear is called a fleet okay so this entire one constitutes a packet but a part of a packet the atomic unit of a packet that is sent on every clock edge we call it as a fleet or, or a flow control digit that is from that word is coming okay so your header is also a fleet here this is another fleet this is another fleet so on and so forth so one packet may be composed of one or more uh, fleets now another important thing is the circuit switching and pack switching so in circuit switching what happens is uh, this is very generic not only to noc you might hear this term very often circuit switching and packet switching especially in uh, mobile communication also or phone communication any computer network you will see so in circuit switching uh, whenever two parties communicate the communication link is initially established they are either permanently established or temporarily established only after establishing the link the actual data transmission happens okay so all the processor based systems that we discussed before they all come under circuit based switching because there is a permanent connection between the processor and the peripheral and the data communication always happens through this established link now in case of packet switching uh, that is not the case here the exact route taken by the packet from the source to destination in most cases you cannot determine that in advance okay that happens during runtime so most of all the nocs and most of all the modern computer network they are packet based packet switching based including our internet for example here if you are sending a packet from here to here the packet may go like this the packet may go like this packet may go like this we don't know it may be taking one of these routes and it will be reaching the destination that's what we call as a packet switch now routing uh, that is the process by a packet is delivered to a destination PE from a source PE. okay now there are a lot of uh, algorithms for doing it we call them the routing algorithms don't confuse it with FPG routing that's a different case so one of the simplest algorithm called dimension order routing DOR or usually called as a XY routing so in XY routing what happens is every switch in the NOC 
this is usually used in mesh or torus topology every switch will have an x coordinate and y coordinate we usually start from the bottom left corner so that's why it is zero zero this is one zero two zero so you can see x is increasing this way y is increasing this way so every switch will have a unique x and y coordinate okay now whenever a switch receives a packet either from his associated pe or from one of his neighboring switches it will always compare the header information from that packet with its coordinates okay so the header will have the information about the destination pe for example this packet has an information of one one that means this packet is destined for pe with the coordinate one one so this switch also has coordinate one one so since they are matching this switch whenever it receives this packet it will deliver it to the corresponding p now if the coordinates are not matching uh, what it does is it will first compare the x coordinate of the packet with its coordinate so here the x coordinate of the packet is 2 and the coordinate of the switch is 1 now if the coordinate in the packet is larger the packet is routed right because it is more than this one so it will go this way if it is less it will be routed left okay so we are comparing the x coordinate first that's why it is called a x y route now in case of bidirectional you can send it either right or left depending upon the coordinate value if it is uh, unidirectional it will be always either right or always either left depends but ultimately uh, at some point the x coordinate in the packet will match with the x coordinate of one of the switches now once the x coordinate matches so in this case you can see so this is the same packet before it came here now the x coordinates are matching it will compare the y coordinate again if the y coordinate in the packet is larger it will send it up if it is smaller it will send it down so in this case it will be going up it will reach here then these two coordinates are matching that means this packet will be delivered to this p now another important thing is uh, whenever you are using an NOC ultimately the data for processing it has to come from external work from some sensor or from wherever it should get processed and processed data should go out to the external world. So for enabling it uh, one of the P's or one of the switches will be interfaced with an external world using a particular bus protocol. Yeah. So usually we use this lower PE, bottom left corner, for interfacing with the external world. Another challenge that we will face in packet switching is this out of order delivery. So in circuit switching, you know the link is already established. So the data will be delivered in the same order. It is transmitted, no issues. But in packet switching, that is not the case. Yeah. Uh, depending upon the traffic in the oral network, the packet that you send first may be delivered at the last. So there will be changing order. But for many applications, it is important that the final data should follow the initial order when you send it back to the external world. For example, our image processing, you are sending pixel information one by one, and when you get it back, they should follow the same pixel order that you sent. Okay, so for that you will need some reordering logic uh, which will do this packet reordering. So this is usually achieved by adding a packet number field in the header uh, along with the destination PE address. So there will be some logic which will be looking at this packet number and based on the number he will reorder the packet before finally sending it back to the external. So that's it. This is the introduction to the NOC. So in the next tutorial, we will see the actual coding and we will actually uh, try an example on real hardware also. Thank you.